Hello and welcome to this video where I will populate the contact page complete with a form, a spam bot catcher and the mailer function. Please enjoy. Open the index page where we will insert a notification component. This will notify the user of a successful send or of errors that have occurred on the way. With App selected, click the Add Component button and under Components, choose Notifies. Adjust the ID and leave Positioning and Display at their default values. Save the index file. Open the contact page. Select the container and remove it. Click inside the section, choose blocks, call to action and select the first block called Align Center. Double click the title and change the wording. Select the secondary text and remove. Double click the paragraph and change the text to suit. Select the button and remove. With the container selected, click the Insert After button. Choose Blocks, Forms and select the full page comment form. The first thing we notice is that the form is housed in a fluid container. We will change this to a fixed container. When we see the page in mobile view, we notice that the button is not at the bottom of the form. To fix this, add another column after the second column. Drag the button inside the new column. Give the new column a size of 12 cols. We will now adjust the wording of the placeholders. For the comment text area, we need to go to the DOM panel. We now see that the comment placeholder text is a different size to the others. When we click on one of the other inputs, we see that they have an extra class called Form Control Large. Copy the class and paste it back in the comment text area. Because the text area is now a bit too tall, change the number of rows to 8. Back in the app structure, we notice that the text area does not have a name. Name is used by the server side. This is necessary to process the field. ID is only so label elements, when clicked and accessed by screen readers, can trigger, invoke the form controls. Let's add the name.
Next, we add the validation rules. Give each input a required value, while the email field gets the email validation as an extra. A last adjustment is to give the form a recognizable ID. The following addition to the form is to try and keep spam bots at bay. Rather than using the dreaded recapture, we're going to include a honeypot field that, when it is filled in, will stop the form from being sent. This is not a foolproof method, but according to claims from others, will stop up to 99% of spam. Select the first form group and click the Add Before button. Choose Vertical Forms and Input Form Group. We need to specify believable values for this input field. Let's use title as the theme. Change the label text. For the input field, change the ID and name. Change the placeholder text Change the size of the input Change the ID of the secondary text Double click the secondary text and change the wording This is so that impaired humans using a screen reader will be warned not to populate the field. Save the file. Select Server Connect. Add a folder and name it. Within the folder, create a file and name it. Under Action Steps, select Globals. Under Properties, select the linked page. Choose our form for the form field. Click the Import from Form button. Under Post, check to see if all of the fields are present. Right-click Steps. Select Core Actions and Condition. For the condition, choose the Title field. If the condition is true, that is, title has a value, then we need to stop the process. Right-click Steps under Then, choose Core Actions and Response. Give the response a name, a status, and some text. Save the file. Back in App Structure, Choose the form. Click the Make Server Connect Form button. Click the Select Server Action button and select the Server Action. Under Dynamic Events, Server Connect, select Forbidden.
For the action, select Danger Notification and give it a text. Don't forget the single quotes. Also include Reset the Form. Repeat the previous steps for error and success. Save the file. Let's test what we have done so far. Open the browser. Leave the honeypot and populate the other fields. This gives us the success message. Repeat, this time enter a value in the honeypot. Gotcha! Back in Rappler, now that we know that the honeypot works, we can hide the honeypot. We do that by giving it a bootstrap class of SR only, which means it is viewable for screen readers only. Lastly, we need to send the email. Under Else, right click Steps, Choose Mailer, Set Mailer, Give the mailer a name. For our project, we will choose the server default as the type. This is to keep th things simple. Right click Setup Mailer and choose Send Mail. Enter the subject text. For the sender, we use the posted values for name, email and reply to. For the recipient, use your own details. For the content, click on the pencil icon. In the pop-up, select the Thunderbolt and choose the comment field. Save the file. Open the browser to check our work. Here we see an error message when we submit the form. 
This is because on my home system, and probably your home system, I do not have a mail server. Once we port our project to the host with a mail server, we will see the success message. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. In the next video, I will populate the events page. See you there.